Um, so something that um, describes uh, structures, so mathematical structures um, that are defined by uh, some operations uh, and equations. Um, so you know, there's this kind of classical theory of universal algebra, which is literally in terms of operations and equations, but then Category theorists over the years have come up with many different kind of kind of generalizations of this. So some categorical notions. theories. Um, I'll just list some examples, so uh, monads, uh, Lorbeer theories, um, these are probably the, the two big ones, then there's more kind of exotic things like props, and if, it doesn't matter if you don't know what all of these are, um, monads with parities. These are all kind of, these can all be looked at in some way as um, a notion of algebraic theory. Um, so so the, goal, the goal for this talk, I guess, is to give a kind of a, a common generalization of all of these. So the point is, these are all, they all in some sense are doing the same thing. They're describing structures uh, defined by operations and equations. So it would be nice to kind of conceptually see like what what feature of the what features of these kind of encapsulate that and in what ways they're different. Um, so I'm just going to start with the well, I guess I'll be mostly focusing on law bear theories and monads for this talk. So I'm going to just start with a, a bit of an overview of law bear theories at least. Um, and just highlight the features that we're particularly interested in, interested in. Um, so first of all, let this um, be a skeleton, so F, uh, of the category of finite sets. And then, so my definition of law theory, which might be controversial, um, So it's a bijective of an object functor, let's say L, uh, from F to some other category, curly L, um, that preserves uh, finite co-products. Um, so the reason this might be controversial is usually people would define this uh, as a functor out of F op, which preserves finite products. Uh, the reason I'm doing it this way around is because it kind of works better for the stuff I'm doing later on, but thankfully I have Lord Vera on my side because in his thesis when he first defined these, he did it this way around. So I'm in good company. Um, okay, so semantics of Lord theory. Uh, what does it mean to have a model of a Lord theory? So let's say B um, is some category with finite products. Um, okay. So a model of our law of A theory L in B. Uh, well, sorry. Just saying. Let's just define the category of models. Um, so, mod L, category of models of L, um, is the category uh, with, so the objects are uh, functors, I'll say capital gamma, from L op. 
to I don't know, our base category B um, that preserve uh, finite products. Um, so now, because we're taking an L off, so this means sending coproducts to products and morphisms. Um, are just natural transformations. Okay, um, and we also have a, a forgetful functor, uh, which I call sem of L, so it's short for semantics, um, which goes from mod L to the base category B, and this just sends uh, gamma to, it just evaluates it at one, so at the, the representative of the one element set in, in F. Okay, um, and we can extend this um, to a functor, just a sem without the L, which goes from the category of Lorvier theories up to uh, this comma category, cat over B. Um, so I haven't said what a morph morphism of Lorvier theories is, but it's kind of if, if you had to guess, then you'd probably be right. Uh, um, and this has a left adjoint. Um, which I'll call stru the structure. Um, and this is, so the existence of this is subject to some kind of size things size conditions, which I don't really want to get into because it's fiddly, um, but yeah, as long as you define things appropriately, appropriately this, this thing exists. Um, and this is kind of the prototypical example of what's called a structure semantics adjunction. So we have um, a category of theories in some sense, and we have a semantics functor which takes them to their categories of models, and then this left adjoint is called the structure. Um, so that's all there is, and we want to compare these to uh, monads. So I'm not going to go through the definition of a monad, I'm sure everyone knows. Um, but okay, so let, let B now just be, um, so let's just say any category. Um, so we have a similar kind of st structure semantics adjunction for monads, but now it's going to look like this. Oh, well, first, let's all introduce some notation. Uh, what time did I start, by the way? Uh, quarter two, so we have another half hour now. Oh, okay. Um, so let's write the uh, following. So cat over B subscript RA uh, for the full subcategory of this common category. the right adjoints uh, into B. Um, so now our, our structure semantics adjunction uh, for monads looks like the following. Uh, so on one side we have this thing which is defined and then on the other we have the category of monads on B. Oh. Um, so, so what does this do? So on this side, if we have um, some functor like this into B, uh, which I call G with the left adjoint F, this is just going to get sent to the usual thing, the monad induced by this adjunction. And in the other direction, we're just going to send a monad to the Eilenberg Moore category with its forgetful functor. Okay, so let's just look at these, and we want we want a, a common generalization of these things. Uh, and you might be think you might be wondering at, the, at this point, well, 
there's this famous result that a Lorbeer theory is the same thing as a finite theory monad on the category of sets. So a common generalization of Lorbeer theories and monads is monad. Um, so why don't, why don't I just say that? So the problem with that is um, it doesn't explain why Lorbeer theories, you can interpret Lorbeer theories in any category with finite products. And that's not explained by the fact that we have some monad on the category of sets. So I'd like to find a generalization that not only describes the kind of notion of theory, but also the semantics of these theories. Um, okay. So let's kind of try and make these things look a bit more similar. Um, so we have the following fact, was really, I mean, it's just true by definition. Um, but the, the free functor from um, B to the Bisley category of any monad um, is bijective on objects. So that's, that's kind of a start. Like a Lorbeer theory is a bijective on objects functor, and every monad gives rise to one of these. Um, and then we also have the following theorem. Uh, which is due to street. And I think this is a theorem that de deserves to be more widely known. Um, and let me just make sure I get it right. So we can identify uh, the category of algebras for a monad. Um, full subcategory uh, of, so the category of pre-sheaves on the closely category uh, on those pre-sheaves, uh, say gamma from sorry, from the closely category up to set um, such that Gamma composed with uh, FT op uh, is representable. Um, so, of course, this is a just a pre sheaf on uh, on B. Okay. So now at least we can um, identify algebras of a monad with certain uh, functors, which is kind of looking a bit more similar to Lorbeer theories. Um, and we have kind of a similar thing for Lorbeer theories. Well, it's much more straightforward. Um, so, given our Lorbeer theory L, um, a functor gamma from L op to B, this preserves. Uh, finite products um, if and only if uh, it's composite with L op. So this is now going from F op to B uh, is isomorphic to uh, a functor of the form just B to the power blank. Some, some object B and B. So th this is the functor that just takes, uh, takes well, the objects of here are natural numbers. This just sends uh, a natural number to B to, B to the N. Sorry, when you say representable, mm -hmm. which definition are representable? Um, I guess isomorphic to, uh, to something of the form. Like this. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I guess this is up to equivalence. Um, okay, so now, <coughs> so in other words, um, semantics of monads, or of a monad T, uh, we, we defined it in terms of this bijective on objects functor.
And, well, okay, so saying that the restriction along this is representable is somehow, somehow related to the home functor. Um, and well, the there is. Oh, okay. Let's we'll do it here. So semantics for the Lorvier theories. We've defined it, of course, in terms of the Lorvier theory itself. And this functor. Like this. So it's, they're starting to look a lot more similar. Um, and this kind of motivates the following uh, definition. So, what I'm calling a proto theory um, with arities. Some category A uh, is just a bijector and object functor. Um, L just out of A into some some other category. Um, so that's kind of like it's a very simple thing, um, but where the the kind of meat is. Well, I guess first I'll define what a morphism of these is. Um, um, it's just a commutative triangle of what you'd expect. kind of a trivial thing, just a bijective and object functor. Um, but this is where, so the next definition is kind of doing all the work. Um, so let's, well let A, B, and C just be any categories. Um, so I'll we'll call a and interpretation uh, of arities from A in B um, with values in C, uh, or that's a bit of a mouthful, so I'll just shorten it to arotation, just short for arity interpretation uh, is just a functor um, which I'll write with kind of pointy brackets uh, from A op times B to C. So A we're meant to think of as some kind of arities. B is a base category for where we're going to talk about models and then C is just some other category. Um, it could be could be anything. Um, okay, so then we have this result. Uh, so any arotation uh, gives rise to an adjunction. Um, this. 
um, which they call the structure semantics adjunction, similarly to before. Um, so I'll say something about what, what this, how these functions are actually defined, and then I'll talk about how they relate to Gorbia theories and monads. So the, I guess the point of this is that in order to have a, a notion of semantics, you need not just a theory, uh, you need a way of kind of interpreting the arities that your theory is using. Um, so let me just say something about how uh, these functors are defined. So given uh, L, this is going to be a, a protein theory. So in other words, just a, a bijects on objects functor out of A. Um, them of L, uh, and this is meant to be kind of a functor into B, so this is an object of uh, cat over B uh, is defined uh, by the pullback like this. out some notation. Um, okay, so a map like this corresponds to a map like this, so this is just just currying, I guess. Um, so I'm going to call this thing H lower bullet, and it also corresponds to a map uh, from A to this functor category, or rather the op of this, and I'll call this H upper bullet. Um, so that's just some notation, so here I have this guy, so this is defined by this pullback, so that that at least just defines sem on objects. Um, I won't I won't bother to say what it is on morphisms. It's almost written on the inside there. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, which bit? The downward arrow L something something. Oh, uh, this this one? Other side of the set. Ah, okay. So this is, um, right, so L is going from A to L, right? And then this is from. Uh, okay. And then this is just restriction along that. Yeah, sorry. Oh, well, actually, before I do structure, I'll say a bit more explicitly what, what this means. So, an object of the category of models, we're obviously going to call a model. Um, so, a model uh, of L consists of, um, so, some object P, B, and a functor gamma from uh, L op to C. Um, such that gamma restricting along L op. Um, so this, this now goes from A op to C. This is equal to uh, uh, this thing. So this is just plugging in B to the, the second argument of this, this guy. Okay, um, so then Right, so for the, the structure functor, so given, uh, let's say, u from m to b, so this is an, an arbitrary object of cat over b, um, we define uh, stru the structure of u, so this is meant to be a bijective of an object's functor out of a, and we'll call this codomain the theory of u. Um, um, so we define this by the um, bijective on objects, full and faithful uh, factorization. 
um, of the following thing. So first of all, we do uh, this guy, each upper. And then we restrict along U. star denotes restriction along this thing. So this is certainly a functor out of A, and then we just make it bijective on objects by uh, factorizing it. Um. Okay. So that's, I guess, kind of abstract. Um, so let's, let's see how it relates to the beer theories of Monads, and then I'll um, talk about kind of how, how we can do a similar thing to encompass other notions of algebraic theory. So for the beer theories, Um, so we're going to take A to be F, our skeleton of category of finite sets, and we're going to take B and C just to be the same category, uh, a finite product category. And then we still need to say what this arretation is. Um, so we take the arretation. And now, based on what we've chosen A, B, and C to be, this is going to be a functor like this. And this is exactly what we had before. So it takes uh, a natural number and an object to be to the n. OK, and then so by this, this general result, we automatically get an adjunction, uh, which looks like this. Um, and if you remember before, what we we originally defined as the uh, structure semantics adjunction for uh, for Lorbeer theories, we had uh, something looking like this. And of course, these are the same. And this embeds into here because every Lorbeer theory is, in particular, a bijective on objects functor out of F, which happens to uh, preserve coproducts, and in particular, it is one of these. Um, and then I guess the result is uh, both squares in this commute. Um, so this, this does kind of uh, generalize the, the semantics of Lovea theories. And then for monads, um, so we're now going to take A and B to be the same category, just any category, well, any locally small category. And we'll take C to be the category of sets. So then, I, well, I've rubbed it off now, but what we need for an arretation in this case is a functor from B op times B to set. And this is, of course, just going to be the home functor. Um, and this gives uh, an adjunction like this, so cat over B here, and uh, proto theories with arities in B here, and a junction like this. And so, what was the structure semantics adjunction for for monads before? Well, down here we had not all functors into B, but just the right adjoints. And then over here, we had monads on B. So this, well, let's draw this in. Um, so this embeds in here, into here, just an inclusion. Uh, and this embeds into here by sending a monad T to the, the free functor from B to the Clausey category. 
Um, so again, this, this kind of general thing uh, generalizes the semantics of monads. Okay. Um, so I kind of, get, at the start I gave like a long list of different notions of algebraic theory, and I've only uh, described how two of them fit into this. Uh, it turns out if we want to like, in, uh, encapsulate other things, uh, we need to generalize this very slightly. Um, so now, let's let uh, X be a two category. Um, that firstly uh, is cotensored uh, over cat. So what that means is, um, given A and C in our two category X and B in cat, we have uh, an object which I'll write like this, with square brackets, uh, B, C, uh, in, living in X, and a bijection, a, nat well, a natural bijection between maps from B to the home category, like this, so this is in cap, and morphisms from A to the, the cotensor. C, and this is in X. Um, right, so that's the first condition that X is cotensive over cap, and the second condition is that uh, X is equipped with um, as a factorization system. Uh, which I'll write E uh, N. Um, so now the story is actually pretty much the same. So, uh, so if we got A, right, so now before A, B, and C were all categories, um, now we're going to have A and C living in this uh, more general category, well, this more general two category X, um, and B is still just a, an ordinary category. So the point here is we're thinking of A as a kind of category of arities. Uh, and we want our arities to be put not necessarily just with a category structure, but with some other kind of structure. We want more ways of combining uh, arities. Um, and we'll see this in, in an example. Um, then uh, an arotation uh, is a, well, a functor. Um, so it's a, essentially the same as before, uh, except now, well, we have to do it like this, define it um, in terms of this guy, sorry. So before this was A and C, before A and C were just categories and this was into the functor category, now it's into the home category in X. Um, and of course this corresponds to a thing, so this is in cat, um, and it cor corresponds to a guy like this. The, to the cotensor. Okay, and then again, so similarly, uh, oh, well, I haven't said what, what the new, our new notion of uh, project theory is. So, um, an X uh, project theory uh, with parities. A uh, is just um, probably exactly what you expect, some map out of A to some other object of X, uh, which lives in the uh, left class of our factorization system. So, um, so you should think, think of E as being bijective on object uh, maps. Um, Okay, 
So, um, so as before, we get, so I won't spell out the details, but they're pretty much the same as before. We get an adjunction between cap over B and proto theories now in X on A. We get an adjunction like this. Um, and I guess I have time just to give one quick example. So if we take X to be the category of symmetric monoidal categories, uh, we take A to be what I'll call blackboard bold B, which is a skeleton of uh, the category of finite sets and bijections. Um, rather than all maps, uh, and we take B and C to be the same, just any symmetric monoidal category. Okay, so now let's let's do um, H upper. This is meant to go from. Uh, oh, okay. So E we're going to take to be just bijective on objects. Uh, bijective and objects function, well, morphisms in here, which are just the symmetric monoidal functions which happen to be bijective on objects. Um, and this, uh, so, and we need to define this guy, which goes from here to just this functor category. And this is, uh, wait, so this is B. Uh, and this just takes N to um, the functor which sends an object to the N tenths of power. Um, and now, uh, so we can identify the category of uh, proto theories on B uh, in this in this two category. This is exactly the category of props. Um, so we get an adjunction like this. Um, which is, turns out to be just the usual notion of a, a model or algebra for a prop. Um, and I guess I should stop. Thank you. So I'm very excited by this. Oh, right. uh, yeah. Thanks a lot for your yeah, that's okay. And I have many questions, but I will just try to okay. give a couple and then ask you later. Maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, one is, uh, so these proto-theories, mm -hmm. uh, aren't they, I'm quite confident they are equivalent to monads uh, in a profound mm -hmm. category on, uh, on the ability, you know? Yeah. So do you somehow use this uh, perspective? Is it useful? In um, I, so I haven't. I mean, I'm aware of it. I haven't made use of it extensively. Um, yeah, so I think there is a way of defining models in terms of this, but it's, yeah. OK. Uh, but, um, and also, uh, somehow, so when you started your talk, I thought, OK, F now, mm -hmm. with set, F is like, uh, you have the, it's like a finite uh, presentation that you take the cool units of things set. Right. You no? Know? So I thought, it, can we think in the same perspective and all, uh, with all the with the rest of the realities you are considering, that, or this is just a particular uh, analogy with uh, with the case of Lewis theories? So there's this. It's an all the realities is like your generators in a sense. Right. So are you familiar with monads with realities? Uh, yes. So I, I indeed that that was also my okay. uh, how this relates to Poland and Melias uh, mm. work on. Uh, yeah. So the, the you can you can. Like this, this covers that as well, where you take A to be your subcategory of arities, mm -hmm. which is a, a dense generator. Of, I see. So A is a dense subcategory of B then, and then the arotation is going to be uh, well. If, so if your inclusion is like this, then this is it's going to be this way, right? Okay. From yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I don't think it's the, well. So a lot of yeah, I guess a, a lot of the time um, this A 
when you when you have like some some general two category, your A is going to be kind of the free object on the terminal category. So here, this is in some sense the the free symmetric monoidal category on one on yeah. the terminal category. Um, so that happens a lot of the time. Um, but I, I don't know if there's something generally at all. After being a generator. So, the natural question to ask when you see something which kind of generalizes all usual examples mm -hmm. is that for, for sufficiently perverse choice of the parameters, you get anything exciting and new? Um, not, not that I found so far. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I haven't tried. I mean, there's, there's obviously lots of scope for trying different things. I have. Tried everything. Um, yeah, I guess I've mostly been focused on kind of reproducing things that already exist. I guess it, this does give you a way. Um, so, I guess I don't know if this is something people have thought about, but it, if you let's say you just had some um, let's say some pro functor from um, let's say. So a pro functor like this. Such a pro functor gives you a way of kind of defining algebras for a monad on one of these guys in the other category. But I don't know if that's something that would ever be useful. Do you think this is a be all end all notion of algebraic theories? Uh, you feel like there's something missing still somewhere? I don't know. I would be very hesitant to, to say that. Because I think like I think so. The way I look at it is it's, it's like a very kind of primitive notion that kind of can be specialized into lots of things. There's, I don't think there's much you can do with it just on its own. Yeah. In the same direction, do you think it generates things that you wouldn't consider algebraic, or do you think it is right. only hitting algebraic stuff at this point? So I guess so. I guess props are already kind of like that. So you kind of like usually algebraic things. You kind of think of operations that have like a bunch of inputs, but only one output. Yeah. Whereas props, you have operations that have multiple outputs. Um, so there might be other things kind of like that, but more extreme somehow. Yeah. I haven't looked at it abstractly, but um, you know Baroni's um, um, algebras where the arities are finite graphs. Okay, I'm not not familiar with this. Uh, algebra graph e Okay. And they're, they're a general notion of an algebra. So, right. So, for example, you can use those to show that pullbacks are algebraic. Right? Mm -hmm. Carriers are pullbacks. Oh, good. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll have to look into that. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Mine is still falling on my original mm. thought. So, for take x to be large category of categories and b also to be large category of categories. Mm -hmm. what, what is the result of the construction? Um, oh, right. Um, the fourth theory of cap cap. Right. So, I don't know. I guess. You'd be looking, I don't, yeah, like a, yeah, I, I have no idea what that would okay. give you, sorry. <laughs> um, so we, we know about the uh, logic theories of unitary monads very well. Does this give you an insight of what are the corresponding unitary monad notion for props? I should tell you, no? Uh, you mean, well, well, I guess, I mean, in some, I think, hmm. well, I mean, so obviously you can say a prop is, in particular, a bijective of an object functor, so it's a monad in the bicategory of pro functors, right? But I don't know how you would kind of characterize them. No, no, but uh, it's a bit different, not perspective. With your theories, it's mm -hmm. the same thing as planetary monads and so Oh, I see, yeah. And then uh, you can go back to the in your class. It was, I was looking for right. such a construction for props, but uh, okay. I never found one. So I was wondering if this somehow computed that. I see. Um, 
Yeah, so I guess I, I haven't looked into too much um, like what happens when you, like how functorial this is in like the choice of A, B, and C, but it might be that there's, there's like, if you choose a different A, and then you can kind of restrict it to this, um, uh, this B, and then that somehow is like restricting to only the finite everything. But yeah, it's, I haven't had Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, before everybody goes off to the pub. Well, the reason that I couldn't close the door earlier is because there's a box of coffee and biscuits blocking it. <laughs> so we can have a coffee. So originally the plan for this workshop series was to bring people together so that some collaborations could start. Um, and officially on the program, next to the coffee, there's something like a discussion. So I'm not really sure how to bring this about. But, um, I'm very happy with the program today. There's lots of talks on more or less the same, not the same topic, but there's lots of it. Uh, if there's six talks, we can make a six by six matrix and pretty much every cell will have some sort of connection. <laughs> Um, so maybe one thing we can do while we all are talking is um, something we teach lecturers at everybody in teaching courses is that mm -hmm. in the beginning or the end of every lecture you have to make sure mm -hmm. you hammer home the message for the day to students. So in the beginning of the lecture you say, I'm going to teach you this and this and this. And at the end you say, make sure you learn this, 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 okay? This is a bit sappy, but maybe we can think about what we learned today. Okay.